This first video in this series will be a walkthrough, a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to build and deploy the post estimation example application using deep neural networks to an RPEG-8 axis camera. And we will start with a factory resetted camera and go through all the steps that is needed. And since the documentation in the readme file is um, sometimes a little bit uh, vague on why we need to do things, um, I will also show some extra information about what we are actually doing and what is happening. So let's start with a camera. We have a blank camera, which just has been factory resetted. And in this case, it's a P3265. So that's an ARTPEG-8 camera. First thing we do is that we need to set up a password for the root account. The second thing I will do is that I will change the capture mode to 60 um, FPS or 50 FPS to get a bit higher frame rate so that we later can try out what is the actual frame rate that our network limits us to and uh, not what the camera is uh, limiting us to. And in the meantime, meantime while the camera is restarting, uh, we can take a look at um, a diagram of what we are actually going to do. And I think this is the um, system architecture that is a little bit vague in the readme file from the Axis example. So what we're going to do is that we're going to have three different Docker containers running in the camera. One with our post estimation um, uh, Python application in it. And one which runs a TensorFlow inference server. And we will access this through gRPC um, remote function calls. And then we have one um, container which just contains the deep learning models. And the reason for splitting it this way is that when you want to update the models, when you have trained a new model on new data, then you just deploy uh, this container or this image to the devices. While if you're actually changing the inference code or the application code, then you deploy this image instead. And the inference server, you will probably not uh, need to touch that often. And the post estimation container or the image and the ACAB DL models image, those two we will build during this guide. While the inference server, we will just pull from the Axis ECP uh, registry and Docker Hub. So let's take a look on if our camera has restarted yet. Seems like it still needs some time to get ready. Um, in the meantime, we can also look on this um, example again, which we're going to follow. So we also have some diagrams here explaining what we are going to do and how it works. So it's running a Flask application and it will serve a web page in our camera to show the results from the inference. And the first step, since we are going to run Docker images in the camera, is that we need an ACAP to actually enable um, Docker in the camera, since it's only the container D um, daemon that is there from the start. So we can find a link down here under requirements to the Docker ACAP. And here we will find some new instructions about how we install this ACAP. So the first thing we're going to do is to make sure that we have SSH access to the camera. And since the camera is factory resetted, it uh, has SSH uh, disabled from start. So we can't SSH into the camera, but we can change this by running a curl command. Let's see if the camera is awake. This looks good. So then we go to the terminal. And the first thing we want to do is that we want to export some environment variables. So we want to export device IP. Oops. 
this is the IP address to our camera. We also want to export the device password so we can easily use it uh, for curl requests. And this does, of course, assume that you're in a safe lab environment so you don't expose your password. Next thing we're going to do is to run this curl command, which calls the <coughs> which calls the param uh, CGI to enable the SSH parameter. And this is of course using the two environment variables that we just exported. So we should now be able to SSH to the camera. We do that. At as the uh, root user. So the next thing that we're going to do um, is that we're going to run this command to um, download a Docker container which contains the docker daemon for the camera or the docker acap for the camera and um, so by running the install command in this camera in a docker container on our developer machine we will um, actually install the docker acap on the camera so let's do this and here we can see that we're also using the device IP and the device password, which we exported. The next thing we're going to do is also stated in the readme file that if we want to, we can enable TLS, which um, authenticates us so that um, not anyone can use the Docker um, ACAP in the camera. And this is very important if you're on an open network, because if you can access the Docker daemon, you can run things um, effectively as the root user in the camera. But in my case, we're on a secure network. So instead, we're going to um, run this command, but set the TLS to no. And this will disable the authentication. So what we can do now is that we can, by using the Docker client on our developer machine, we can access um, we can access the camera and access the Docker um, daemon in the camera. So now we see that we couldn't um, connect to the Docker daemon, and it's because we have installed the ACAP application, but we have not started it. So we can do that with the same we're using install, uh, we call start. Now we can see that the Docker client or the Docker daemon on the camera is um, accessible using our Docker client on this computer. And the last thing that we're going to do is that we're going to tell the Docker um, daemon to use the SD card to um, store all the images and layers because they tend to be quite big when we do especially deep learning containers and the, the internal flash in the camera is not really big enough to keep all this information. Um, so before we do that, we can verify in the camera um, GUI tab that we have the system and storage, we have an SD card installed that we can actually use.
what we can do now if we want to see all the parameters is that we can also do the list command and set the group to the docker the wrapper and we see that we have enabled SD card support and we don't use TLS. And let's make sure that we can still access the, um, the Docker daemon. Okay, so now we have done everything that we need to make use of Docker in the camera. So let's now go back to the um, to the um, uh, post estimation um, readme file. And here again, we need to export some environments variables. First, we need to specify the architecture. Because this will be uh, used later when we build the containers to make sure that we build them for the correct architecture. And in my case, I have an ARPIC-8 camera. So that is an ARC64 architecture. And we should also specify the ship. We can use TPU for the accelerator or the CPU um, for in turn for running the network on the CPU. And of course, we want to use the um, accelerator. Let's specify the TPU. Um, yeah, so for the RPEG 8, this should of course be RPEG. Eight. And this is since the RPEG-8 cameras have another kind of DLPU than the RPEG-7 cameras where some were equipped with a TPU. So for the RPEG-8 cameras, the ship should be set to RPEG-8. And it could also be set to a CPU uh, if we want to run it on the CPU. But in this case, we set it to RPEG-8. Um, we also need to use the um, IP address again. In this uh, remit, they have used access target IP instead of device IP as in the other one. So let's just, for simplicity, export this um, too. So this target IP, and we set this to value of device IP, which we have already specified. And we can also set the Docker port and to the port number which we used before, which is 2375 if you're not using uh, TLS. If you're using TLS, it would be 2376. So the next step is that we will actually build our Docker containers. And then we can go back again and look at this um, system overview. So the first container that we will build is the pose estimator. And actually before we do that, if we don't have KMO installed on our computer for virtualization of other architectures, then we need to do this. And this is just because we want to run um, binaries uh, from the target architecture in a Docker container in this um, developer computer so we can make use of a pip install for example and um, this you can see if you inspect what it looks like in docker images that we are going to build but i've already done that so i can skip that step and instead i'm going to build um, the docker container for the post estimation and that is specified in the um, docker file um, this can be a bit cryptic if you don't, um, if you isn't familiar with Docker. But in this folder, and if we just do Docker build in this directory like this, then it will use this Docker file. But this Docker file will actually build the application. And then we're going to specify what the name of the built image should be. And we're just going to use the same as they use here. So we export that name, which we're going to name it to. And this command. 
kan this build arg arc that tells um, pass through the environment variable arc that we specified before um, to the build um, uh, step. So for me, this was very fast since I've done it before and the layers are already in the Docker cache. The next thing is that we're going to take this image that we just built and we're going to um, send it over to the actual camera device. Um, so we do this in this case by um, piping it through std art from the save command to the uh, load command. And this is not always the best way. Um, it's probably better to use a Docker registry if you have one available. And we will look at that in a later video, how we can make this process a bit faster and more efficient. But for now, let's just um, run this to copy the container with the image we just built to the camera. And since I'm not using TLS, we have to remove uh, TLS verify. Otherwise, we can just run. And this will take a while since the container that we just built is um, probably quite large. So while this is running, we can do our images and we can rep for um, the value of app name. Here we can see the image that we just built and it's 567 megabytes that we need to um, copy over to the camera. So we can see that this takes quite a while and this is why it's probably much more efficient to do a rapid development using a Docker registry. <clears throat> so that one is done. Um, let's go on. So the next step is that we're going to do the same um, for the other image, the ACAB-DL models image. And while this one was the one containing the code for application, this is the one containing the models. And if we want to know where the models come from, we can look at the Docker file that we use uh, to build this container. But the only thing this does is that it um, copies a pre-built or pre-trained model from internet, from GitHub, um, to the models director in this uh, container. So let's um, first define the uh, name that we want to name this image when we built it. Do that by exporting the model name variable before we run this command, which will uh, build the image uh, from this Docker file and name it to this name and uh, uh, pass through the arc environment variable so it knows which architecture it should use. So that was that image built, and now we're going to copy this one too to the, to the camera. Same again here, we're not using TLS, so remove that one. And this one was much faster to copy. So that's in the camera now. And now the next step is to um, use the docker-compose command to start all the containers in the camera. 
But before we do that, let's go back again and look at this um, system overview. So what we have done now is that we have built this image and pushed it to the camera. We have built this image and pushed, pushed this one to the camera. What we haven't done is to build this one. And this is because uh, we're just going to pull it from the, uh, from the Docker registry and the Axis ECP Docker registry. And that is already specified in the Docker Compose file, which we'll look at very soon. So we don't really need to do anything about that. And in the Docker Compose file, we will also see that there are two different named volumes that we mount from the containers. So when starting um, this container, we will mount a volume called ACAPDL models. And this volume will actually be mounted to the directory where we downloaded the models in, the, um, in this image. And so that effectively means that the models will be in this volume when we have um, this um, container running. And when we start the inference server, we also mount this volume, which means that the inference server can access the models that are downloaded um, in this image. And the inference server will also mount uh, another volume called inference server. And this volume is only used to create a Unix socket. And this is how the post estimator, which also mounts this volume, uh, will access the or talk to the inference server. So the in inference server creates a um, socket on this volume and the post estimator uh, opens the sockets and that way we can use um, gRPC to communicate or send our um, requests to the model server which will uh, run the inference and return the results to our um, post estimation uh, um, Python script. And we can also see in the Docker Compose file that we have some different mounts. So the post estimator um, where we run our, um, our Python script that will mount uh, the video stream library and uh, the bus, uh, which is needed to get the image stream from the network camera. And we can see that the inference server mounts a few different uh, libraries, uh, both system libraries and ACAP um, related libraries for um, uh, different uh, acceleration libraries and also dbus and uh, some system binaries so this is what is needed to run the um, tensorflow inference server so we can see this if we take a look at the docker compose uh, jaml file so here we define the three different servers we have the post estimator we have the inference server and we have the ACAPDL models um, service. And we also define the two different named volumes, the one for our models and the one for our um, Unix socket. And here we can also see which image is used by the different services. So the post estimation service is using the um, first image that we built. And the inference server um, is using um, an image which is specified in the, um, another file. And this is um, then just um, specified as the um, URL to the Docker registry on the Axis ECP account. And finally, we have the DL, um, ACAP DL model, which is the second image that we built. And we can also see the different mounts that it, um, each of the servers does, both the volumes, but also the system mounts. So this means that we should be able to start the service. Once again here, we're not using TLS verification. So let's remove that. 
And what this command does is that it looks on this Docker Compose YAML file and um, it creates all these services by using some extra environment variables which are specified in um, these configuration files. But these configuration files are what depend on the architecture and the um, uh, chip for the CNN acceleration that we specified. So calling the up command here will start all the different or the three different services in the camera. And we can also take a look at the um, logs here. And we can see here that we get some messages from the inference uh, daemon about our model not being um, very well optimized for this specific um, hardware accelerator that we are using. And we can also see that we have some open open VX um, issues. So that probably means that we can get quite a bit better performance if we build a model that is better suited for the um, primitives that are available in this hardware and the libraries that we are using. But that's also for later. So for now, let's just um, open this um, address to port 5000 on the camera where the um, um, application is exposed. So go back to the camera and um, it's this port 5000. Hopefully we should be able to see um, the live stream here. So this is the postnet estimation um, model. And we can see that it's probably not trained on the data from um, this kind of cameras. So it's not um, very accurate and it's also and not super impressive um, frame rate. But at least we have a um, model running that was downloaded from, um, from the um, um, pre-trained uh, repositories. So we can just stop this. And if we want to stop all the containers, we run the uh, docker compose down command, which removes um, all the different services that we set up earlier. This was ever everything for from this video. So in the next video, uh, we will take a look at how we can um, streamline the process to make it all a bit easier to uh, work with. And uh, also how we can um, make the bugging easier if it doesn't uh, work as we expect it will or how we can look at uh, making it more efficient uh, when it comes to the frame rate.